Yeah, I forgot to put my headset in. Hi, if you would like to know how calcium can prevent you from being sick, you clicked on the right video. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Stern and welcome to my channel, Take Control of Your Health. If you were meaning to subscribe but haven't had a chance to do so yet, please hit the subscribe button now as that is my reward for putting this information out for you. And don't forget to hit the like button if the content helps you so more people can find it. And last and most importantly, please share this with anyone that you know that you think could benefit from the information. So we are going to be talking about calcium in this video and it might sound like a boring topic, um, but from my perspective, it's really fascinating. And before I talk about calcium, I just want to mention that it is a mineral and it is the most abundant mineral in your body. Um, most people know that you need minerals, but they don't know what they're for or what they do. So let's talk about what the most common minerals that people know about. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, iron, right? So most people know they need those things and you think about them from time to time for various reasons. If you have anemia, you know you need iron. If you, uh, you, you know that zinc is important for your immune system, um, potassium, if you're getting muscle cramps, magnesium helps you to relax. These are things are popular right now. And by the way, all of those minerals that I just mentioned have a lot of other functions in your body. But there are many more minerals that people may or may not know about. I'm going to name some of them phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, chlorine is a mineral that you need, uh, copper, selenium, iodine, manganese, fluoride, even fluoride is a mineral that's part of your bones and teeth, and chromium. Um, there are some other minerals I didn't mention that are found in super small trace amounts like boron and vanadium. Um, so some of the minerals I named are called macro minerals because you need a lot of it and some of them are called trace minerals because you only need a little bit of them. And what do minerals do in your body actually? I like to describe them as keys that turn on processes in the body to make things happen. For example, iodine must be present for you to produce thyroid hormone. Sodium has to be present for you to transmit electrical uh, signals in the nervous system. Iron has to be present for your red blood cells to carry oxygen. Potassium has to be present uh, for your heartbeat to be regulated properly. So there's many other examples that I can give. That's just some of them. But I want to focus on calcium today because it has quite a few functions in the body. And there's one that you rarely hear about. And if you try looking it up and trying to get information on it, it's it's actually hard to find. So when you think about calcium, what is the first thing that you think about? Most people think about bones. And most people think their bones are made out of calcium. That's not exactly correct. Your bones are actually made out of collagen, which is a protein. And I have a video about this topic. Um, called, is collagen really necessary? I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one. Without collagen, your body would fall apart. It actually holds your body together. But calcium and other minerals are what makes your bones hard, your bones and your teeth actually. Um, there's three main minerals in your bones, calcium, magnesium, and, and phosphate. Um, there's also a lot of trace minerals that you need, a lot of the minerals that I named earlier. So prescribing calcium to prevent osteoporosis or to ensure that you don't develop osteoporosis, which is a loss of bone in your body, is, is not exactly correct. Okay, so you need a whole bunch of minerals in specific ratios to keep your bones healthy and you need collagen. And most importantly, you need to be able to absorb all those things. You need to be able to absorb minerals. You need the right form of the minerals and you need to be able to, to absorb collagen. Um, so that's actually um, 
a good topic for another video. And I think I'll make one about this. But, but what I want to talk about are some of the other functions of calcium that most people don't know about. And there's a lot of them. So one is that it's involved in muscle contraction, which includes your heart, which is a muscle. It, along with sodium, helps with transmitting nervous system signals. It's involved in blood clotting, so without it, you would bleed to death. It activates enzymes that play a role in digestion and energy production. Yeah, so you actually need calcium for digestion. Um, it also plays a role in blood pressure by influencing the relaxation and contraction of your blood vessels. It helps to regulate the life cycle of the cell and cell division. It contributes to maintaining the body's pH as well as the, the blood's pH. And it's a signaling agent that's involved in hundreds of processes in the body. It's, it's literally, it literally acts as a messenger. Now comes the part that I really wanted to focus on. One of the functions as a signaling agent is in immune system response. So I'm going to give a very simplified version of what actually occurs because the actual chain of events is extremely complex and, and fascinating. But if you haven't studied cellular biology or immune physiology, it's it, it's impossible to follow. I'll be using all these big words that even I have trouble understanding. So I'm going to give you the simplified version of it. But before I do that, I just want to plug my favorite water filter, the one that I have in my home. So according to the Environmental Working Group, EWG, your tap water probably contains pesticides, herbicides, fluoride, arsenic, heavy metals, chlorine, chloramine, which is a mixture of ammonia, ammonia and chlorine, and other gross things. Water softeners and reverse osmosis filters produce unnatural, unbalanced water. Small water um, pitcher filters are very limited in what they can remove. Filter manufacturers use words like remove or reduce or take out, but often don't tell you exactly how much of the contaminant they remove or for how long. You need a filter that removes toxins like arsenic and fluoride down to non-detectable levels for many years. And the filter that can do that is called the ideal earth water filter. You, get, you can get it for your whole house or under your kitchen sink. Um, if you get the whole house one, you'll not only be drinking water that is like a pure mountain spring, but you'll also be showering in it. Find out more at the website called refresh, refreshingcleanwater.com. I will put a link to that website in the description of this video and you can save $100 on your order using the code CORI23, C-O-R-I-23. I'll put a link actually to the code. Um, I've been drinking out of this filter for two years and it is the best water I've ever had. I don't even like any other water now. And my dogs are happy with it too. And um, I think I'm healthier since I've been drinking it. So getting back to calcium, like all minerals, it has to be attached to an ion. What does that mean? It, 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 all minerals have a positive or a negative charge. So I'm sure you've heard of different types of calcium, right? There's, you've heard of calcium carbonate and calcium citrate and calcium lactate. Those Carbonates, citrates, lactates are the ions that calcium can be attached to. Now, you can't absorb calcium in your body unless it's attached to one of those things. However, some of those ions are more absorbable than others. 
So when the calcium is absorbable, it's known as ionizable calcium. I'm not trying to get too scientific here, but I'll explain why this is important to know. So the calcium, whatever calcium you take in, needs to be converted to the ionizable form, which is called calcium bicarbonate. Calcium carbonate is the most difficult pathway to become bicarbonate. And unfortunately, that's what most commercial calcium supplements are, calcium carbon, carbonate. You may have seen, um, let's say, TV commercials for antacids like Tums or Rolaids, which have calcium carbonate in them. And they actually claim that this is a good source of calcium. No, it's not. You're not absorbing it. And if you go into like any kind of commercial retail store to buy calcium, that's mostly what you're gonna find. Calcium citrate is better. And from what I've seen clinic clinically, calcium lactate is best. It's the most easily converted form of calcium into calcium bicarbonate. It's also the least expensive. So, um, now I'm going to oversimplify again, but when you take in calcium and it becomes bicarbonate, it kind of like, let's say, breaks up into electrical signals. Ions are electrical. And these signals are like, they're literally signaling different parts of the body to do things. So I, I like to think of them as smoke signals. So in terms of the immune system, the smoke signals from the calcium alerts the immune system when there's an invading pathogen. So it's like the calcium is telling the immune cells, hey guys, over here, um, there's, some, there's some bad guys you need to take care of. And, um, you know, you need to kick their butts and, and get them out of here. So um, I, I just find that so cool and fascinating and um, <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with it actually. The other fascinating thing is that if you have enough of this calcium stored in your tissue, you won't need to develop a fever. Fevers are a way of making the body an inhospitable environment for pathogens. But when you have enough calcium in your tissue, fevers are unnecessary. So the moral of the story is to keep your immune system strong, you may want to consider taking calcium lactate. I, I've been taking it for years and I haven't had a fever since I started taking it. And if you do find yourself with a fever, you just take more of it. You have to get enough stored in your tissue so you won't need the fever anymore. So that's, that's what I give patients to prevent fevers. I give it to them if they develop a fever. We use it for children also. The, I'll show you the, the one that I use, calcium lactate that I use in a minute, but it also comes in a powder, so it's great for kids as well. You know, so if you, have, if you do have a fever and you take a fever reducer like Tylenol, acetaminophen, or paracetamol um, to suppress the fever, you're actually suppressing the body's function, you know, the body's ability to get rid of the pathogen. So that's not a good idea. Doesn't it make more sense to give your body the calcium so that it doesn't need the fever and the pathogens will still go away? Um, and also because it reduces your body temperature, it's also good for hot flashes if you if you're having menopausal or perimenopausal hot flashes it's it's good for sunburns if like you get too hot you can pop some of the calcium lactate and i've also helped people with epileptic seizures with the calcium so partly because it reduces temperature so including inside the brain but also because of its the role that it plays in the electrical transmission system so I'm going to show you the calcium that I use. Bear with me for a minute. As most of you already know, I am not good at technology. And, but I did it. Yay. 
So um, this is the from my favorite um, company, supplement company, Standard Process. So you can see it's very inexpensive. Um, and this calcium also has magnesium in it. Because why? Because you need um, magne calcium and magnesium in a specific ratio. So sh you shouldn't be just taking calcium on its own. So I will put a link to this calcium in the description of this video. As always, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, you can reach me at questions at drcorey.com. There will be a link to my email on the description of the video. If you need specific help with your immune system or any other health issue, I am available for consults. You can just email me to request a consult, or you can go to my website, drcorey.com, and there's <clears throat> a link there to request a consult. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already, and hit the like button if you found this helpful so more people can find it. And last and most importantly, don't forget to share this video with anyone that you know that you think would benefit from it. Thank you so much for listening. Until I see you again, stay well.